will like you know be accountable to ourselves for starting the podcast instead of just talking about drag race oh <gasps> pangina I, I i have to say i don't care who wins anymore yep i don't care you're voting out jimbo who was a clear front runner and pangina and you're leaving me with who i i you like juju b but juju b has played out yeah it uh, mm. yeah like i mean i love her at this point um i thought for sure she would vote out she would vote out blue hydrangea just uh, for the vengeance of it all <clears throat> the but gaggery she, of it all did she voted jamie who needed to i think who needed to go home I mean, she won a week. She has she has a repeater badge, and she was in the top the other week. So I don't think she she deserves to be there over a couple of other girls. Yeah, do you know what? I think Holland has more to give, and Janie was here to give it. Oh, I hate that. I, I, I don't hate Blue, but I hate what Blue did. I think, you know what? If we were in Blue's position, I think we would have done the same thing. Like, Pangina was a threat. Yeah, when she came know, out, when she came out as a freaking casino slot machine and didn't get red to fill for that, yeesh, bitch was gonna win. You have angel wings, and like the thing is too, Pangina voted out Jimbo, and you have to argue that Jimbo deserved to stay there over Jujubee that week. Yeah. So it's like it's you karmically live, you live by the sword, you die by the sword. Yeah, it's, it, yeah. Some people would argue that karma, but. <sighs> it's fine it's it's whatever we'll get over it you know what Even, we won't get yeah. you know what we won't get over is the ranking of the killers in the scream franchise oh boy i don't the know gaggery yes okay do you know what last week welcome to the full volume podcast i am jolie gi jolie that we can't use real names here we have to use our cover name That is Harvey Brent. And we are a Scream podcast now. A temporary Scream podcast. <laughs> um, last week, we uh, we do tier lists in between Marvel Disney Plus shows slash comic book adjacent shows because we just wrapped up our review, our deep review of John Cena's Peacemaker. <laughs> Which we enjoyed. <laughs> yeah. And it was so good. Was and good. while we wait for... Uh, Space Daddy and Space Daddy <laughs> Moon Daddy <laughs> to Moon Daddy to make an appearance. Um, Moon Knight <laughs> Lunar Daddy March. Lunar <laughs> Daddy uh, which is March 31st. <laughs> okay, I gotta I gotta collect myself. Jeez. I'll, I'll take over. I got it. <laughs> As we're waiting for Moon Knight to air on Disney Plus at the end of the month. We have decided to. Jolie recently watched the new Scream film, which I call Five Cream. And we, last week, we ranked all the films in the franchise on a tier list. And this week, we thought it would behoove ourselves to further that theme and talk about the killers of the franchise and ranking them. You know, and of course, there's going to be full spoilers, there's going to be motives, there's going to be kills, there's going to be the final reveal and their their monologue speech of why they're doing what they're doing we have to take this all into account mm -hmm. and all find right. out who is the most iconic killer in the franchise yes so i shall start the share and you can see it you can see it oh there it is there are, she is so are we going to go in order of how they revealed themselves throughout the franchise let's do that um inside this tier list i think they're in there alphabetically they are. I so, can see that. Yeah. Um, so the file, the person who named these files obviously named them after their characters. So we will go in alphabetical order. As no, no. Go, go in movie order. Sorry. As Brent said, Harvey Brent. Sorry. I didn't mean to use your Christian name. <laughs> um, as Harvey Brent said, we will go in reveal order. We will go in reveal order. So I believe Scream 1. Mm -hmm. The first person to reveal themselves as the killer is Billy. Yeah. Ooh, I just saw him look up <laughs> in my mind, and it sent chills down my spine. He has that effect on people. Yeah, he is a good-looking man. 
I'm just seeing him also as as a cop and Jughead Jones' dad. So still, oh, yeah, he is. still super fly. <laughs> okay. Um, I would, at the time and in our current time, if I were to see a film where the boyfriend revealed himself to be the killer in and with that kind of motive, I'm going with S tier. I think he's an S tier. Yeah. Okay. He's an S tier because of the shock of it, because we're led to believe it's him throughout the entire movie until he's exonerated. Mm-hmm. And he still ends up being the killer. <laughs> His motivation is perhaps the most justified because it's the closest to the premise of Scream, which is Sydney's mom broke up his parents' marriage. And so it's, it's a story of revenge and hurt. Mm-hmm. He's ruthless. He's cunning. He's smart. He orchestrated all of this. I think Billy's an S tier personally. Absolutely. He's definitely the mastermind and he's definitely the leader. Speaking of duos, yeah. we weren't even talking about duos, but uh, okay. Stu? Next in reveal. I think so. That's Stu at the end. I mm-hmm. think I think Stu's a B tier. Okay. And we'll, we'll, let's talk it up. <laughs> I definitely don't, th- I, I agree with you actually. Let's just lead with that. I agree with you. He's not an S tier. No. He's not an A tier. But he's not a C or a D. No. Because uh, he is impressionable enough. And we discussed this in the last episode that potentially there is an interest in Billy that made him be this compliant. Mm -hmm. um Mm. he kills his girlfriend he kills kills, his ex-girlfriend too yeah he kills his ex-girlfriend he stabs himself i mean he allows himself to be stabbed to be Um, penetrated by billy's knife mm -hmm. um also he's a little bit i mean mean, you wouldn't be able to let this stuff happen if you weren't actually a psychopath a little bit of a psychopath too yeah he reveals himself to be quite unhinged oh man that performance should not have worked, but it does. Mm-hmm. It's very unhinged. Yes. And it, because he doesn't have full motives and he's just kind of like the best friend along for the ride, um, that is what makes him a B tier for me. It, he, and, yeah. It, and there's a theme like throughout these movies where when there are two killers, there's always an alpha killer and there's always like the accomplice. Mm-hmm. And, Stu is the accomplice. He's not the main killer. Like Billy's the main killer and, you know, pulls it off with, you know, um, full, full expertise. Stu is good. He's unhinged. He has a wacky performance. The motive is a little undercut, but I think we're left to fill that, fill in those blanks ourselves. So, mm-hmm. but I mean, he's great. So I, I think B is where, where Stu lands. Absolutely. Cause honestly, yes. What would have, what would his expectation of a reward have been other than Billy's love? I know. <laughs> All right. So had that came to fruition on screen, he would be an A tier for sure. Oh, that would be A tier, and Billy and would maybe. have been like S plus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So next, uh, next, I think two. Scream Two. I think the first killer to reveal themselves is Mickey. Yes, Timothy Oliphant. So Timothy Elephant is the best friend of Derek he and is. film buff. Film buff. And we find out a psychopath and murderer. Mm-hmm. He, I think he's more brutal than Stu. Like he gets a lot more kills and he's, I think he might be more intelligent than Stu. Yeah, I would. And I think I actually quite like he's unhinged in a different way where he's smarter and calculating after he reveals himself. Like he tries to convince Sydney that Derek's the other killer. And yeah. that he can't trust her boyfriends ever. So he's he's a good killer. Um, the only, my only issue is that he only has like freaking five or eight minutes of screen time before he's revealed as the killer. Like he's very, you know, not, not well fleshed out. So that's my only issue. I think he might be slightly ahead of Stu, but it's close. And here in the B tier. Mm-hmm. There yeah, like his here. his motive to kill isn't even enough to push him into the A tier for me. 
No, it's not. It's he's just a psychopath and doing it for fame. He's doing it because of the, all the media trials, the O.J. Simpson trial. He wants to be that level of famous. Yeah. He doesn't care if he's in jail. Yeah, and it's just kind of weird. So we will be keeping you in the B tier just ahead of Stu. Well, yeah. Yeah, I think that's a fair spot. And like he he inches just ahead because he does get a lot more brutal kills and he seems to be smarter. So I'll give him that. And he may or may speaking of, he may or may not be the master mind behind all of this, but he's definitely taking a leading role, more of a leading role. Than Stu. Than, yeah. yeah. He's than more Stu. proactive. And also a little more than his partner in crime. I wouldn't this call her Lewis. an accomplice. But yeah. So we find out that the second killer is Billy's mother, who is out for revenge and posing as another reporter. Yes. And she's gone through a drastic makeover. She's lost like a million pounds. She looks completely mm-hmm. different, which is, I guess... The only way they can justify Gail not recognizing her, because Gail is a reporter who has surely dug through documents and photos of Billy's family. Mm-hmm. So it's a little weird that she didn't recognize Mrs. Loomis, but they had to explain it like she got a complete makeover. So Mrs. Loomis's revenge is just straight up, or her motive is just straight up revenge on Sydney for killing her son in the previous film, Billy. Mm-hmm. So it's very Pamela Voorhees from Friday the 13th, which is cool. I guess it's a good reveal. Uh, but is it strong enough? I, I would know. personally put her behind Stu. Stu. I think she's, yeah, I think she's upper C tier, possibly. Yeah. Okay. But she, make no mistake, like, after she reveals herself, like, Laurie Metcalf, who plays her, it does a great job chewing up the scenery. Mm-hmm. Like, really, really good job. Like, she's entertaining to watch. She's just a little weak, um, you know, She's it's hard to believe her as a competent ghost face, but she does get one of the most important kills in the franchise. She kills Randy, and she confirms that in the climax. She is the one that killed Randy. So, yeah, she's she's there. I think that's a good spot for, for Mrs. Loomis. Okay, perfect. All right. So, oh, moving so on to Scream 3. Scream 3, fuck. So that's Roman. <laughs> I hate Roman. I hate the fake death he has near the end of the film where he just is in a coffin with no heartbeat and like no pulse. Apparently I, I hate it. I hate the reveal. I hate that he never had a conversation with Sydney before his reveals. So it's kind of like deflating. Sydney's like, I don't know who the fuck you are. I don't like it. His motivation is, I guess, technically good, even though it's a lot of like recon, um, or, you know, rec- retcon, sorry, like, you know, going mm-hmm. back and saying that he's the one that started off this whole killing spree by reaching out to, um, to Maureen Prescott and she wanted nothing to do with him. So in return, she set Billy and Stu under her because he knew she was cheating with Billy's dad. So that in theory, it's like a solid ish motive. And like he, he's pissed at Sydney because Sydney had parental love that he never had. Mm-hmm. There's just so much hokey things like him using the voice changer, all this stuff. I yeah. don't I don't like Roman. And you're making a film about the life of Sydney Prescott and you're the director of the film. How have you not met Sydney Prescott yet? How have you not tried <clears throat> as her secret brother to shoehorn yourself at least a little bit into her life and yeah. had even a coffee conversation with her or like like an accidental like you you stalked her ass into a Starbucks you know what i mean like if you're enough of a psychopath because let's be real here all of these people are psychopaths they yep. <laughs> there's n- there's no like heel turning or double heel there's no heel turning they're <laughs> always they've always been deranged and this is what leads them down the path of being a serial killer. Um, it's arguable that most film directors are psychopaths, but mm, let's not go there. Um, <laughs> He's going to sue me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but why? Because we're talking so fondly of SMG all the time. <laughs> okay. I, I don't like Roman. I think he's a D yeah. tier personally. That's me. Yeah. Cause honestly with, with, uh, with the amount of um, he explains himself 
He has a great story, but it's just such a whiny white man's <laughs> story. It like, is. Who fucking who? Boo hoo. Also, you're rich. Like, get over it. Yeah, it's like, oh, my, the mother who I found out um, abandoned me doesn't love me. So I'm going to kill everybody? What is wrong with you? Just buy a new mom. Yeah. You have money. You're, yeah, right? You're Jewish and in mm. Hollywood. Buy a new mother. <laughs> I, is this, is that wrong of me to say? I don't know. Like, you clearly um, can afford it. Gigantic house with secret Murphy doors everywhere. Mm-hmm. Just buy a new mom. You get a new one. Yeah, I mean, you made it, the pl- the plot of the, the the entire time leading up. This just seems too intricate, right? This is a, l- a very convoluted way to get Sydney in your grasp. Oh, yeah, it's very contrived. <clears throat> I just yeah. I don't like it. I don't like it. And mm-hmm. he is my one of my least favorite killers. <clears throat> also, no accomplice. All right, so- no accomplice officially. Yes. Okay. So moving on. Scream we... four. Yeah. The uh, first killer that revealed themselves is Charlie. So, hmm. I quite like the way Charlie reveals himself because it's a nice parallel of Scream one, where it was um, Casey's boyfriend tied up in the chair and he gets killed in Scream one, mm-hmm. and Scream four, it's Charlie in the chair and Kirby has to play the movie trivia to save him, and Kirby, we assume, wins with the other ghost face on the phone. And so she runs outside and unties Charlie and he just rails her with a knife and reveals himself as the killer. I like that reveal because it's a play on Scream 1 but turned on its head. Mm -hmm. My problem with Charlie is that he's a little Mickey Mouse um, and he's just, you know, he's out of all the secondary killers, he is the most second fiddle. Yeah. So I would put him in the sea behind... Yeah. This is Loomis. Yeah. He like, I, I like the way he describes that, you know, um, Jill is the new Sydney and that Charlie is the new Randy because Randy had a crush on Sydney before Randy died in the original films. And so he's like, uh, Charlie thinks he's the film nerd. That's, you know, he's the victim and really he's the killer. So mm-hmm. he's trying to mirror the archetypes and relationships from this first scream film with him and Jill and so I like that, but he's just, oh man, if he was given a little more to do, he probably could have been a really, really cool reveal and a really cool justification, but he's just, he's such a wuss and he's so gaga over Jill that he doesn't realize that obviously Jill is going to betray him. So yeah, I think he's perfect where you have him. Okay. Per- oh, excellent. Okay. So moving on next. Jill. Speaking of Jill's. Oh man. Ooh. This one is a doozy. I was gagged when I saw this in theaters and Jill revealed herself as a second killer. It's there's something about the final girl being the killer that just like violates you as an audience because we're just led to be conditioned that the final girl is pure and she's untouchable usually. And so for Jill to re- to reveal herself as the killer and her motivation is deranged in the best way and so ahead of its time. Mm hmm. You know, like talking about, you know, social media and how she doesn't need friends. She needs fans and she's going to be the new Sydney. She's going to be this new victim and she's going to get all this coverage on Good Morning America. You know, at the same time, her and Charlie are filming all these murders so that people online will be able to see what she survived. It's it's very twisted and very demented and very fun and ahead of its time. Uh, yeah. And that to me, that's what edges her into the a tier i i think she's a tier she might even be s tier below billy but she's a great reveal yeah because that is insane um not only are these again these films are known for being very meta um and creating more commentary about uh, the horror genre and films in general sequels etc um and the the zeitgeist the <clears throat> what what's happening in horror movies at the time a lot it's like a lot of documentary horror a lot of um like Blair Witch style paranormal activity style yeah so n- her her <clears throat> and Charlie are filming it all yeah in the attempt to also like to use that actual footage to make 
an actual footage film based on their survival <laughs> or let's say just her survival well yes <laughs> it would be weird if charlie was still there so one thing too though that i think like obviously these movies are meta but it's meta in a different way that people don't talk about a lot is that when you think about jill's motivation and i guess charlie by proxy but i'm talking just jill for a second mm -hmm. jill is also pissed off about being in sydney's shadow she says you're always just so fucking special it was sydney this and sydney that like she grew up hearing that so jill always kind of felt second fiddle in her family i think the casting of emma roberts as the killer is so juicy on a meta level too because she is the niece of julia roberts who is a freaking superstar to this day and so in a way, it was almost like Emma Roberts was overshadowed by her more famous uh, aunt. Yeah. You know, and it's it's that, and same with Rory Culkin. He is a less well-known Culkin family member. So it worked on that meta level, too, to the audience outside to say, like, these are two actors that have way more famous, famous family members. You know, surely they would have an axe to grind with their way more famous family members, like Jill and Charlie would have an axe to grind with Sydney. Yeah, it's just so unbelievably good and there there it goes there goes my scream franchise tier list changing <laughs> i know that's the thing like sometimes i'm like man so i think scream 2 is more fun but scream 4 is juicy there's mm -hmm. juice in scream 4 so it's yeah it's tough there are people right out there writing academic papers about this <laughs> I'm going to search that later <laughs> yeah and honestly oh we and we forgot to mention that too is that jill is sydney's cousin yeah well, yeah, that's and that she was yeah. always pissed. She had to grow up in the shadow of Sydney because Sydney mm -hmm. survived these first three films, and she's a, you know, an international, um, not superstar, but I mean, internationally well-known name. So, mm. oh, it's just it's juicy. And Jill's monologues and her when Dewey tells her in the hospital that Sydney survived, and Jill's just like, what? <laughs> like, oh fuck, I didn't end up killing her. It's, yeah, it's so juicy. I, I, Jill's a great killer. Oh yes. It's very active, very unhinged. I don't know if she killed. I think Charlie might have done most of the actual killing. I think Jill only killed a couple people. But yeah, she's she's clever. And like the mm -hmm. whole self-mutilation scene, like it's so fun and like so over the top and like crazy. And like she's really committed to taking over Sydney. And like and she falls down at the end after hurting herself and just mirroring Sydney on the ground. So she's like almost becoming the new Sydney. It's it's great. Yeah. It's 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 at once great and also kind of ridiculous, but mostly great. Yes. Okay. Right. Eleven years later, five cream. Yikes. Okay. So the first killer to reveal themselves is Amber. Yes. Who? I was not surprised that Amber was the killer. No, and I hate when I'm not surprised. But I was shocked at how sudden she revealed herself. Like it still shocked me when she did review her, reveal herself. Tell you know the baby, I mean? yeah, tell the babies at home how she revealed herself again. Oh, well, the surviving after she has a house party and everybody gets cleared out, people start dropping like flies and getting stabbed and stuff. And Amber is like, one of you is the killer. I, I was with Tara. It can't be me. And people are running in with blood on their hands because they're checking on other people outside and they're freaking out. And one girl, Liv, pleads her case saying, I'm not the fucking killer you know, pleading her case, and Amber just takes out a revolver and says, I know, and shoots her right in the head in front of everybody. And everybody freaks the hell out because she just revealed herself so suddenly. Mm -hmm. So uh, she gets points there. Amber is a particularly vicious killer. Um, just a lot of multiple quick stabs. Like, she knows because of her stature, she's, you know, a bit smaller. She's got to be quick. Yeah. And, and she does get the honor of killing Dewey after five films. Yeah, so she gets in a lot of she gets in a lot of great stuff. She does, um, and she works to her advantage. However, her and I will give her that as a ghost face. She, I would put her above. Uh, I mean, under Emma Robert Jill. Oh yeah, yeah. But definitely more than Mickey and Stu. Okay, <clears throat> I maybe. Can work with that in there with mickey and Stu, my problem and this is why i'm kind of like i don't know where i would put her i really don't um is that there's just no development of the characters in this film yes. as much as there are in the last 
Um, she has very limited screen time before her reveal, which I don't yes. like when they do that. Like, I I think the reason, I don't think it's a mistake that Jill and Billy are so high up is because we spend significant amount of time with them before they revealed as the killer, which makes it more juicy when they reveal themselves. Yeah, and they do what they did in, uh, they what is done in uh, 1996 is done here in 2020, where they um, they cut to a scene of them all together at high, in the high school, like, outside of their high school, conversing and, you know, cavorting with each other. Mm -hmm. But there's just something different about this. There isn't like a bond, an immediate bond between all of the characters. Probably because she's a sociopath and doesn't know how to bond. (laughs) But right, right. (laughs) That's that's probably a clue. They're like, oh, there's something off about this chick. Mm -hmm. Um, My only issue with Amber Mm -hmm. is that she gets a little hokey after the reveal. She tries to give us Stu. She tries to give us Stu vibes. I think Stu did it better in terms of how he revealed himself. But Amber, like, her her dating Richie also, too, is kind of gross when you think about it because she's 17. Yes. Yeah, that's and gross. They, they met on Reddit. On Reddit. Which, hey, we, we stand a relationship that, you know, comes to life in a digital space. But here's the thing. He also... And this is something I read on Reddit, but Richie has been dating Sam for a very long time. Six months. En- enough. Enough, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That he's, but also we know how old Sam is and we know how old Richie is. Yes. He's ushering the children away from the murder scene. Yeah. Um, so. <sighs> this, I guess this is more a conversation about Richie in a way because it's more his doing but yeah amber's dating him and so and she's also a purported mega fan i i love her line in the kitchen where sydney and gail are beating her up and she's like wait no i was radicalized (laughs) that was so great yeah (laughs) i she's somewhere in the b tier i don't know where she falls she's not better than Stu. i don't think she is either Stu Stu did a better unhinged than amber but amber i think had more iconic kills yeah it's tough. I think, yeah, we'll have to settle that for now. Yeah, she'll be, she's there for now. All right, Richie. Richie. So Richie's gross because he was grooming a 17-year-old online on Reddit. So yep. repo. Um, I will say, though, like, I, I, I also, too, so I was spoiled by Reddit that he was the killer, him and oh. Amber. Um, but it was still his, the way he revealed himself was still, sh- well, I knew at, at that point so many people were dead that it had to be Richie. But Mm -hmm. it was a very well done reveal still where he stumbles down the stairs, pretends to go for the gun and then stabs Sam. It's still pretty fun. And he he's fun to watch throughout the film, both before and after the reveal. So Richie gets points because he does get a lot of screen time. Mm -hmm. And so I like that that we spend a lot of time with him and he merely makes you think that he's a good guy. And it almost is like a betrayal of the audience when he reveals himself to be the killer. Mm -hmm. Um, And again, his motivation is the toxic fandom. I, I do love his line where he said, how could um, how could something that's born out of love be toxic? You know, talking about his love for the stab films. Mm-hmm. I think, I don't know, I don't think he got as many kills as Amber. It, uh, the director said that Amber did most of the dirty work. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because he, here's the thing. She did the actual killing. He played the long game for them both. Yes. He pursued Sam. He... <laughs> She had to allow him to do that in mm-hmm. order to achieve their goal, which means <clears throat> he definitely slept with somebody else, created a very loving fake relationship with somebody else enough that you mean, you know, that they're they care about each other enough that he would drive the vehicle back to Woodsboro yeah. to see her estranged sister. Yeah. Right. If this isn't somebody that you loved, you would just leave them at home to because they clearly have shifts at the bowling alley that no one's not like who's going to work those shifts. Not nobody. Right? Also, who can afford to not work those shifts? Inflation. Mm, that is the real horror movie. That is the real horror <laughs> plaguing these films is the cost of living. <laughs> so I almost uh, again for being. An in unintentional commentary on male grooming. Yes. Or maybe it is intentional. Who knows? But, like, I feel like that was unintentional. I think it was, too. Um, th- He 
he and this movie win so many points. Yeah. They're just bringing all kinds of things back. But where does he fall on the scale? I don't, Ooh, I don't know. know. One thing I like about him and Amber is that out of all the killers, they don't turn on each other. Like yes. M- Mickey and Mrs. Loomis turn on each other. Um, Jill turns on Charlie. Bill and S- Billy and Stu start to get tension between them when they stab each other too hard. Like they're on the verge of turning on each other, I think. Mm-hmm. So I like that Amber and Richie are kind of a unified front, actually, as gross as it is. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Like, it's hard to rank him with. I think he falls in B tier as well, but I don't but know where just in B tier. her? I don't know. I don't know if he's behind or in front or like ahead of Stu. Like, I'm having a hard time placing Richie. Um, hmm. Because I like that we spend a lot of time with him. We get to know Richie, which is good. Well, then if we get to know Richie and are this angry about him, I could, it could almost be an argument that he's better than Mickey. I think so. Okay. Like, but I know mm-hmm. a lot of people also think Richie's just a pussy. And I'm like, well, that's kind of the point. He's like a, a whiny fanboy about the Stab franchise. Mm-hmm. Um and so a lot of people don't like that about Richie, but I'm like, that's that's part of the character. That's the intent. You know, he's him and Amber are whiny, toxic fan boys or fans. Mm-hmm. And so, but like Richie is also, he just doesn't have the stomach for it. Whereas Amber did, like she was doing a lot of those killings. Um, but I just, I think his, his killer monologue, the acting, like it's, it's very well done. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I think, I think he might be B tier at the top there. Yeah, I agree. Oh boy, the next thing that they're going to do, and this happened while we were talking, I was like, oh, they're going to turn on each other. Watch one of the twins be the next killer. I would or, love that. It, do you know what, it would have been awesome if she was actually hooking up with one of the Meekses. Who, Amber? A- Amber. And mm. she turned. <laughs> that would be cool. I would actually love for Mindy to be the killer next time. Yes. Month. That would be. Yeah. And I don't think we've ever had. We've never had a character that was have been in a previous film be the killer. It's always been new characters being the killer. That would be cool. Yeah, because, and we've never had the f- supreme film, well, I guess you could argue that Mickey is a film fan because he was in film 101, but yeah. like, uh, like a true film fan in the way, in the, in the way that Randy is. And also Randy's niece, like, that would be great. Mm-hmm. Oh boy, this was a lot easier than the films. It is. I I'm very confident in Billy and Jill. B B tier gets a little muddled for me, and then I'm definitely yeah. confident in D tier. <laughs> <laughs> I hate Roman. I almost. I was like, do I want to put Charlie ahead of Mrs. Loomis? I don't know. Again, I. Yeah. It's so funny seeing everybody's rankings. They're all so different, especially that B tier. I think we really captured. It changes. But I, I think Billy and Jill are iconic killers. Like, Jill has the best ca- killer reveal, arguably, out of any character in the franchise. Mm-hmm. Aside from Billy, I think Jill has the best reveal. Yeah. But that's just me. I'm a big Jill stan. Okay. I mean, we <laughs> catch <laughs> catch our American Horror Story ranking. <laughs> I, I know, right? Like, this is pre-American Horror Story. Like, Emma Roberts was born for... This like this is what catapulted her into that like mean girl kind of status as this turn. So she's this is like an important mm. role for Emma Roberts. She never talks about it. Apparently there wasn't a very good vibe on set with everybody mm. for Scream Four. By the way, it was filmed in Ann Arbor, our backyard. Ooh, yeah, that's why a lot of it looked kind of familiar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that wraps up another tier list. I hope you're satisfied. <laughs> Yeah, Scream fans, I, we tried I'm to satisfied. Yeah, um, I, I talk on the outside like I'm not in there too. I'm just like newly cementing myself into the fandom. I'm always, I will always 100% be a lurker. So, um, it's nice to kind of jump into the pool with both feet and be be obsessed. I will find us some Scream T-shirts. Or I will make us some. Are you going to make me a Scream 1 so I can go with my Scream 2? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I have to make a movie poster one, but then I will also make one of my own design. Of course. Yeah, yeah. because I'm obsessed now. If you're obsessed, let us know. You can send us an email at fullvolumepod 
at gmail.com. <laughs> you can follow us on social media and you can listen to this and every single one of our podcasts and all of our other podcasts on the Comic Book Syndicate Network at www.comicbooksyndicate.com um, or uh, wherever you're listening to this podcast. You can catch the video uh, if you're not already watching the video of it. You can catch the video on YouTube on our uh, Comic Book Syndicate channel. That way you can see Brent's t-shirt in all of its glory. And yeah. <laughs> I don't know what we're going to do next week. We still have a lot of time to wait for Moon Knight. But we'll figure something out for you folks. We will. Um, uh, mm, mm, mm. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go oh, ahead. Oh. Until next time. Keep it loud. Keep it at full volume. <laughs> okay, bye. 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 <clears throat>